Hey, how are you? So today we're going to walk through the process of removing and cleaning the exhaust valves on the Polaris 600 HO uh, twin, domestic twin. Um, so this process will pretty much cover um, any of the, uh, the 600s, whether it's a CFI or a carb model, whether it be in the IQ chassis or the Fusion such as this. So the, the first step you want to do is um, there's a couple hoses that are held on by the spring clamps. Where I, what, what you're going to want to do is you're going to remove the, uh, the hose first. And then if you're looking at the valve assembly, there's four bolts on it. The only two you're going to be concerned right now to remove the, uh, the, um, the assembly from the block is the two on the outside, one here and one here. These, the, the two at 12 and 6 o'clock are not to be removed at this point because those are just holding the, uh, the plastic cap onto the assembly. So those are 10 millimeter. So let's go ahead and remove right. those now. So we went ahead and removed both of the exhaust assemblies from the engine. So if you if you notice the uh, the gasket on the PTO side stuck to the cylinder, and the one on the magneto side stuck to the uh, the uh, valve assembly. Um, it's not that big of a deal. That's going to happen. Uh, the big the most important thing is uh, when you take them off, make sure that they don't tear. Because obviously, if you do if you do tear them, you have to replace them. So let's go take a walk over to the bench and see what we're looking at. Okay, so here is the uh, the valve assembly. So essentially, you know, just to get your bearings, this is the top of the uh, the valve assembly, and you know, and you'll know that by the location of the uh, the uh, the hose barb on the uh, on the uh, the block. So if you look at the um, the valve, the uh, there is a top and the bottom of the valve, and the easiest way to know it is there's an indentation on the top of the valve and then if you'll flip it over there's a smooth side so i'll explain later uh, why that's important but essentially uh, that is uh, the bottom and that's the top so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and, and clean this up using some carb cleaner and some scotch bright and we'll get this nice and clean and we'll go to the next part okay so the uh the exhaust valves are clean uh, top and bottom so what you want to really want to do is really concentrate, concentrate is getting all the carbon uh, off of it um, around the edges and the, the front of the guillotine and everything else. Um, one area not to be really concerned about is as far as these insets. Um, they're just there for uh, weight reduction, I guess. They really make no uh, contact within the, uh, the cylinder. Uh, so don't spend too much time on that. So don't worry about that. So the next step is we're going to uh, remove the plastic cap and um, look at the exhaust bellows, clean that up and inspect that, make sure there's nothing wrong with that. So the way to get the bellows off is you know, you're going to want to take the two 10 millimeter nuts off the plastic cap and take that off and, and we can go from there. Okay, so once you take the, uh, the cap off, what you're going to be left is uh, this little spring and the actual bellows. So what you want to do is take a look at the bellows and make sure that there's no cracks or anything like that. Uh, so what should happen when you take take the cap off, uh, this whole, honestly this whole area should be clean and, and free of oil. Uh, what will happen is once you separate the bellow from the actual exhaust valve assembly, you should get some two-stroke oil pouring, pouring out. Uh, that's normal. So um, as long as this rubber bellows isn't saturated with oil on the outside, more than likely it's in pretty good shape because if, if there was a crack or a tear, what would be happening is all the uh, the uh, the oil, the uh, two-stroke oil would actually um, will be making it past the assembly and collecting it on the outside. So what? So if you don't see any type of buildup or residue on the outside, generally you're in pretty good shape. So what you want to do now is you're, you're going to want to kind of Flip it inside out, all the way around, and and then what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna take your carb cleaner and essentially uh, clean all the the uh, the uh, the excess two stroke oil, clean it off nice and good, and make sure you clean the back side of the bellows and <clears throat> and um, clean <clears throat> excuse me the ceiling surface under the back side of the bellows as well. And I'll show you why next. All right, so now that you have the uh, the exhaust bellows all nice and clean, 
no oil, no junk or anything <clears throat> built up on any of the surfaces or anything like that. What you want to do now is you're going to want to put the bellows back down and put the cap back on. So, um, so when you're doing this, there's a right way and a wrong way to do this, right? So what, what's going to happen is, so I, just as, as an example, I put this in the wrong orientation, all right? So if you do it like this, right, because right now the valve will spin, right? And if you look, the bell spins with the valve, right? So what will happen is if you put the cap back on, say you, we flip this down and everything else, what you have to remember is if you look at the cap, this is also a clamping surface, all right? So say if you put this on and, and then you realize, oh crap, I put this in the wrong <clears throat> orientation. If you go to spin this afterwards, what you're gonna happen, what's gonna happen is you're gonna turn you're gonna tear the bellow right off the shaft. So because again, <clears throat> once that cap is on there, if you look, if you try to spin it, right, you're gonna you obviously it's not gonna be able to, to turn in that in that groove because it's clamped down so what you want to do is make sure when you put it back together you put it in the right orientation which is this way line it up with the dogs right the alignment dogs right here and then go ahead and put your cap on and then you're all set so why don't you go ahead and do that now okay so now that you got everything cleaned and back together and in the correct orientation um, just go ahead and put the cast back on and to put the two 10 millimeter bolts back into place. Um, they just need to be snugged. Again, they're just holding down a plastic cap. Uh, don't put them, uh, don't torque them down with too much force so you may end up cracking them. So essentially that's it. And the last thing we have to do is just check the, uh, the cylinder ports for any excess carbon or oil, uh, uh buildup. So let's go take a look at that now. Okay. So as far as cleaning the cylinders, um, this sled isn't that bad. It only has 2,000 miles on it, so, uh, and it's been running Polaris VES Gold Plus, uh, fully synthetic. So there isn't a lot of carbon buildup on the valves, and I'm seeing just about the same on the, uh, the cylinder ports. So at this point, you, you have two choices. You can just hit it real quick with a, a little bit of scotch Brite and some carb cleaner to clean up the, the surface. Um, or some people would uh, opt to go in there with a little bit of a, a tiny screwdriver and uh, clean up some of it if they can um, and go from there. But essentially that's it. Now it's just a matter of uh, go ahead and putting everything back on. Okay, so that's it. Go ahead and uh, put the valves back on. You'll probably have to compress them a little bit to get them into the slots and clear uh, the cross support here. But essentially that's it. Reattach your hoses and tighten them down. Um, just a word of advice, these are 10 millimeter uh, fine threads. Um, I would only use, you know, they don't need to be that tight. They don't need Loctite or anything like that. Um, and when you're torquing them down, just remember they're, it's a quarter inch fastener going into a, a aluminum head, so don't tighten them down with that much force. Use a quarter inch drive ratchet to torque them down and just pretend it's uh, a uh, same thing as a spark plug. Just snug it up, and essentially that's it. So, um, so essentially that's it. Um, it's really not that bad of a job to do it, and it's part of your seasonal maintenance that anybody can do. So, I hope this helps everybody out. If there's any questions, concerns, comments, anything like that, go ahead and put them in the comments box, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching, and have a great day. Bye.